Hi, third grade friends. Welcome back to Miss Beale's Read Aloud of The Trumpet and the Swan. We last left off with something super exciting, which was the cop was going to go try to steal a trumpet. And chapter nine is called The Trumpet. So I'm pretty excited that it might have worked out. Let's see. Chapter nine, The Trumpet. As the cop flew towards Billings on his powerful white wings, all sorts of troublesome thoughts whirled in his head. The cop had never gone looking for a trumpet before. He had no money to pay for a trumpet. He feared that he might arrive after the shops had closed for the day. He realized that in the whole continent of North America, he was undoubtedly the only trumpeter swan who was on his way to a city to get a trumpet. This is a queer adventure, he said to himself, yet it is a, no a noble request. I will do anything to help my son Louis, even if I run into real trouble. Toward the end of the afternoon, the cop looked ahead and in the distance saw the churches and factories in shops and homes of Billings. He decided to act quickly and boldly. He circled the city once, looking for a music store. Suddenly, he spied one. It was a very big, wide window, solid glass. The cob flew lower and circled so he could get a better look. He gazed into the store. He saw a drum painted gold. He saw a fancy guitar with an electric cord. He saw a small piano. He saw banjos, horns, violins, mandolins, cymbals, saxophones, mer... marabophones. Hmm, we should look up a picture of those. Cellos and many other instruments. Then he saw what he wanted. He saw a brass trumpet hanging by a red cord. Now is my time to act, he said to himself. Now is my moment for risking everything on one bold move, however shocking it may be to my sensibilities, however offensive it may be to the laws that govern the lives of men. Here I go. May luck go with me. With that, the cob set his wings for a dive. He aimed straight at the big window. He held his neck straight and stiff, waiting for the crash. He dove swiftly and hit the glass window going full speed. The glass broke. The noise was terrific. The whole store shook. Musical instruments fell to the floor. Glass flew everywhere. A sales girl even fainted. The cop felt a twinge of pain as a jagged piece of broken glass cut into his shoulder. But he grabbed the trumpet in his beak, turned sharply in the air, flew back through the hole in the window, and began climbing fast over the roofs of Billings. A few drops of, bre of blood fell to the ground. His shoulder hurt, but he had succeeded in getting what he had come for. Held firmly in his bill, its red cord dangling, was a beautiful brass trumpet. You can imagine the noise in the music store when the cop crashed through the window. At the moment the glass broke, one of the clerks was showing a bass drum to a customer, and the clerk was so startled at seeing a big white bird come flying through the window, he hit a drum, a tremendous wallop. Boom went the drum. Crash went the splinters of flying glass. When the sales girl fainted, she fell against the keys of the piano. Rawr, went the piano. The owner of the store grabbed his shotgun, which went off by mistake, blasting a hole in the ceiling and sending down a shower of plaster. Everything was flying around and falling and making a noise. Boom went the drum. Plunk went the banjo. Up went the bull fiddle. Help, screamed a clerk. We've been robbed. Make way, shouted the owner. He ran for the door, stepping outside and fired another shot. Bang! At the disappearing bird. His shot was too late. The cob was safe in the sky beyond the range of gunfire. He was headed home toward the southwest, high above the roofs and spires of Billings. In his beak was the trumpet, and his heart was the pain of having committed a crime. I have robbed a store, he said to himself. I have become a thief. What a miserable fate for a bird of my excellent character and high ideals. Why did I do this? What led me to commit this awful crime? My past life has been blameless, blameless, a model of good behavior and correct conduct. I am by nature law-abiding. Why, oh why, did I do this? Then the answer came to him as he flew steadily on through the evening sky. I did it to help my son. I did it for the love of my son, Louis. Back in Billings, the news spread rapidly. This was the first time a swan had broken into a music store and made off with a trumpet. A lot of people refused to believe it had happened. The editor of the newspaper sent a reporter to the store to look around. The reporter interviewed the owner and wrote an article about the event for the paper. The article was headed, Large bird breaks in a music store. White swan crashes through window and makes off with a valuable trumpet. 
Everybody in Billings bought a copy of the paper and read all about the extraordinary event. It was talked about all over town. Some people believed it. Others said it never could have happened. They said the store owner had just invented it to get some publicity for his store. But the clerks in the store agreed that it really happened. They pointed to the drops of blood on the floor. The police came to look over the damage, which was estimated at $900. The police promised they would try to find the thief and arrest him, but the police were sorry to hear that the thief was a bird. Birds are a special problem, they said. Birds are hard to deal with. Back at the Red Rock Lakes, Louie's mother waited anxiously for her husband to return. When he showed up in the night sky, she saw that he had a trumpet with him. It was slung around his neck by its cord. Well, she said, as he glided to a stop in the water, I see you made it. I did, my dear, said the cob. I traveled fast and far, sacrificed my honor, and I have returned. Where is Louis? I want to give him this trumpet right away. He's over there sitting on a muskrat house, dreaming about the empty-headed young female he's so crazy about. The cob swam over to his son and made a presentation speech. Louis, he said, I have been on a journey to the haunts of men. I visited a great city teeming with life and commerce. Whilst there, I picked up a gift for you, which I now bestow upon you with my love and my blessing. Here, Louis, is a trumpet. It will be your voice, a substitute for the voice God failed to give you. Learn to blow it, Louis, and life will be smoother and richer and gayer for you. With the help of this horn, you will be able to la at last say kaho like every other swan. The sound of music will be in your ears. You will be able to attract the attention of desirable young females. Master this trumpet and you will be able to play love songs for them, filling them with ardor and surprise and longing. I hope it will bring you happiness, Louis, and a new and better life. I procured it at some personal sacrifice to myself and to my pride, but we won't get into that now. The long and the short of it is I had no money and I took the trumpet without paying for it. This was deplorable, but the important thing is that you learn to play the instrument. So saying, the cob removed the trumpet from around his neck and hung it on Louis, alongside the slate and white chalk pencil. Wear it in health, he said. Blow it in happiness. Make the woods and the hills and the marshes echo with the sounds of your youthful desire. Louis wanted to thank his father, but he was unable to say a word, and he knew it would do no good to write thank you on the slate because his father wouldn't be able to read it, never having had an education. So Louis just bobbed his head and wagged his tail and fluttered his wings. The cob knew by these signs that he had found favor in the sight of his son, and the gift of the trumpet was acceptable. All right, that's it for chapter nine. Chapter 10 is called Money Trouble, and I see a picture, so I'll give you a sneak peek. And I'll be back soon with the reading of chapter 10. Miss you guys. Bye.